Hi, join me momentarily for a thought experiment. Imagine that you and your neighbors live in feudal times. You can reside on a plot of land, toil, and stay there as long as you annually give the liege lord a huge portion of what you earn. The feudal lord also has sycophantic underlings, protected by, of course, armed guards, all of whom he gives some of your wealth. And they tell you that more and more of your money will be taken to pay for the feudal indoctrination center that your children will have to attend, or you'll have to jump through hoops in order to let them stay home. And even then, if you try to educate them yourself, you'll have to comply with their commands. Now imagine that once in a while, the Lord lets you visit with his administrators and their armed guards for some slight, rare changes in policy, but that the overall system will remain in place, and that if you don't wear the right, royally approved attire, you will be assaulted by the armed guards, carried away, and possibly charged with a crime. Well, that's what local tax systems, the public schools, and their administrators and their police often are like. And the situation just revealed itself in all of its insulting glory in Volusia County, Florida. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. Well, according to the New American's Alex Newman, eight mothers who attended an end of October school board meeting to oppose the scheduled vote mandating masks on kids in schools, on buses, and in any school associated so-called activity were forcibly removed as trespassers on public property, which is philosophically and logically impossible because, of course, the moms refused to wear the masks. What? This is outrageous. <laughs> this is outrageous. This is Rachel Cohen, police dragging her out of a Volusia County school board meeting for refusing to wear a mask. When you go inside without a mask on. They slammed the door in my face and I tried to open it again and then, then Tia came out and they were shoving her out the door. That sure is a handy way of removing political opposition to mask mandating, isn't it? Just, well, mandate masks at the meeting, knowing full well that those who oppose mask mandates for kids will not wear masks at the meeting and then use that as a so-called justification to have the vociferous troublesome tax serfs removed. All, of course, while cops break the magic six-foot barrier as an added bonus. Where do we live right now? Is this 2020 America? Because it feels like 1930s Germany right now. As Newman writes, school board officials in Florida's Volusia County are under fire after using police to forcibly eject a group of concerned mothers from a public meeting on trespass accusations. Their supposed crime? Refusing to wear a face mask while speaking out against the forcible masking of children in government schools. It's like Alice in Wonderland. Where's the Red Queen? It's out of control. It's totally upside down world, it's crazy. As a result, and so despite Florida and Volusia County having no mask mandate in place, the mothers were manhandled and thrown out of the school board meeting by police. Video of the spectacle went viral and made headlines and TV across the region and beyond. Police body cam footage can be seen at the link provided by New American. Of course, it's easy to get lost in the government weeds when studying attacks on liberty like this. So before we look at the more fundamental attack on liberty, actually many attacks layered one on the other like sediment to be excavated by a liberty-minded archeologist, let's actually address the practical points about masks first. One of the mothers who was dragged from the building and dropped on the ground was a woman named Rachel Cohen, who told Newman, parents have a sovereign right to their children and health decisions pertaining to children must be made by parents or guardians, not by a school district, Cohen explained, echoing concerns by the other moms who were ejected from the meeting as well. Masks are an experimental medical device. And Cohen amplified on that point to Newman. Among other concerns, Cohen noted that there have been no double-blind placebo studies conducted on children wearing masks seven hours a day for an entire school year. Year. Quote, widespread long-term use of masks, especially in children, is experimental, and the implications are unknown. 
though risk analysis does show that there is more risk to a child's health in wearing a mask than not wearing a mask, she said, noting that under the Nuremberg Code, experimental procedures require informed consent. It would be pretty darn good if more parents understood the Nuremberg Code because they would get their kids right out of schools immediately. She's absolutely right. And as I noted in a July 2nd piece for MRC TV, there's also debate as to whether mask wearing can increase CO2 levels in the blood. Ohio State Rep Nino Vital tested masks for oxygen levels just outside the mouth and nose and found that all of the suggested masks reduce oxygen for those wearing them to levels lower than OSHA safe. Dr. P. Raghu Ram, president of the Association of Surgeons of India, has explicitly warned people not to wear masks when exercising. Then there's the practical debate about whether the masks are effective to stop the COVID-19 virus, a virus that even if one accepts the inflated CDC COVID-19 case and death statistics, has a fatality rate roughly equal to that of the seasonal flu. And not only does the box of the most popular N95 mask actually say on it that it does not protect against the transmission of COVID-19, numerous studies indicate the same for cloth masks. And a fresh Danish study found that the N95 mask is worthless in protecting the wearer from the 0.1 micron virus passing through its 0.3 micron weave. Cohen, who spoke with Newman, added this. The eight mothers that were trespassed at the last board meeting had no intention of creating a disturbance, but knew we were well within our rights to stay in the building, as we were in a public place and under Governor DeSantis's Executive Order 20-244, there were to be no penalties exacted for being in a public place unmasked, Cohen continued, adding that neither the state nor the county have a mask order in place. But on the philosophical level, this is the upper surface of many layers of unwarranted government control and political usurpation of individual rights. As Dr. Samuel Blumenfeld repeatedly noted in volumes of scholarship, the notion of government-run tax-fed schools was not prevalent in colonial America and the early Republic. In early 19th century Boston, there was a study called the Bullfinch Study that found that 96% of the kids there were educated privately and the qualitative content of what they learned was much better than what we see today. From math to grammar, they did better. Citing Blumenfeld, William F. Jasper wrote in 1986, the 1817 Bullfinch Report, says education historian Samuel Blumenfeld, revealed that, quote, an astonishing 96% of the town's children were attending school, and the 4% who did not had charity schools to attend if their parents wanted them to. Thus, there was no justification at all for the creation of a system of public primary schools, and Bullfinch reported as much to the school committee, which accepted the subcommittee's recommendation. That is from Is Public Education Necessary? from 1981. I highly recommend that tome, and in fact, all of Sam Blumenfeld's books, one of which my father, Paul, actually edited under a pseudonym when he worked for the Reagan administration in the 1980s. And you know, as government has crept in, as more and more of our money has been turned into those palaces of propaganda called the public schools, we can see that it's not just mask mandates. And of course, by the way, the Volusia County School Board did vote to mandate the masks on the kids. But it's not just mask mandates that represent moral black marks against the government. From the time in school that the politicians mandate to the content of what kids must learn, and of course, taxpayers have to buy, all of the government tax indoctrination paradigm not only must be questioned on practical grounds, it has to be demolished on moral grounds. Otherwise, we're no better than serfs begging permission to get ever so slight changes in the way that we are controlled. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. As we head towards Christmas, I really appreciate you being here and remembering 
the importance of truth. And by the way, talking about Christmas, I will refer you right off the bat to MRC-Store. If you get the opportunity, please go there. Check out the great items that are in the store. And of course, by buying some of the items, you support the Media Research Center. Please visit us at MRCTV.org, MRCTV.org, because the team is awesome. They're such great people. I'll see you over in Facebook. I'll see you in YouTube in the comments section. And of course, we'll see you on Instagram as well and on Twitter. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.